Hey, what's up guys, BoHD here. Hope you are doing well. Now, yesterday, Microsoft officially announced Windows 11. If you guys don't know, it is the next major desktop operating system that'll succeed Windows 10, which was announced over six years ago. There's a bunch of new features included in this operating system. It's not just a design overhaul with a bunch of new themes. There's more to it, although that's what I'm gonna start with. I'm gonna start with the design. Now, I don't know about you, but I think that you could certainly argue that a more modern, more simplistic design is a feature. And this new operating system, it features uh, definitely a new look. So you've got uh, a bunch of translucent windows with rounded corners, which Microsoft is trying to replicate panes of frosted glass. One of the areas with the biggest design overhaul is the start menu. It's a staple for the Windows operating system. The start menu, uh, search, and the taskbar have all been centered on a dock at the bottom of the screen, kind of similar to Mac OS or Chrome OS. And it's been simplified and powered by the cloud, which some people are gonna love, some people are going to hate. But it uses space formerly occupied by newsfeed tiles to offer access to recently used documents and applications. In fact, the Metro style tiles that we've seen in previous version of Windows are actually being killed off entirely. They're being replaced with static icons in a grid layout, which you can see under the search bar and above the recommended section. And if you don't like this new centered alignment, you can actually go into the settings and change it so that it opens up in the left-hand corner, just like in past versions of Windows. Now, along with the uh, new translucent windows and the new, the new start menu, the themes have been improved pretty dramatically, offering a modern aesthetic that will carry over to app windows, the wallpaper, and, uh, and various other aspects of the operating system to create a more coherent appearance and design language. Now, a massive new feature coming to Windows 11 is support for Android applications. Any application you have on your Android smartphone will be able to be run in Windows 11. And that's awesome. In fact, Microsoft said at their events that Microsoft Storage has been rebuilt from the ground up, offering Win32 apps, progressive web apps, and support for universal web platform apps. It's even offering access to Android apps that are discoverable through the Microsoft Store, which actually uses the Amazon App Store to uh, populate those Android apps. And actually, as of making this video, a Windows engineer confirmed that you'll actually be able to sideload your own Android apps in Windows 11. So pretty much anything goes, it sounds like. And I think it's also worth mentioning that uh, all the revenue that developers earn through their own commerce engines like Adobe Creative Cloud, it actually won't be split with Microsoft. So the developers will be able to keep all of the funds and all the revenue that they earn. Now, if you're running an Android app, you can easily snap it to the side of the screen like a typical Windows application, but the task management features have been seriously improved with what Microsoft is calling snap layouts. These will let you snap applications into a variety of pre-configured layouts that best suit you and your needs, but most importantly, your screen that you're working with. So there's many more options than there were before. Snap groups will also save your groups of snapped windows so that you can easily open and close them as needed. Along with that, there's been improvements made when docking and undocking your Windows laptop to uh, an external monitor. Basically, when you unplug your laptop from a second external monitor, your apps will automatically rearrange themselves to a single display to best fit your laptop's screen. And then when you reconnect your laptop to that second external monitor, the apps will flow back exactly as they had been arranged before. Little things like that have been uh, introduced in Windows 11 that just make using it a heck of a lot more nice. And since there's no longer a separate version of Windows for tablets and touchscreen devices, Microsoft has done a few things a little differently. They tweaked a few things to accommodate these devices in Windows 11. So Windows 11 will detect when there's like no keyboard to make touch targets a little bit bigger. And they will also add a little bit more visual clues to help you navigate via a touchscreen. And this is all made as a way to improve the touch input without actually creating a whole separate operating system or really significantly altering the look and feel of Windows itself. Now we got to talk about some of the behind the scenes performance improvements because there is a number of them that should improve the experience overall. Uh, Microsoft said that Windows 11 will be able to wake up faster from sleep mode. It'll uh, unlock faster via biometric authentication, AKA Windows Hello and it'll be able to browse the web faster no matter which web browser you're using, not just Microsoft Edge. Microsoft said that Windows updates themselves are 40% smaller and will happen in the background, so you shouldn't even have to worry about them. 
Uh, Microsoft also said that Windows 11 will use less energy. So if you're using it on a laptop, you should notice improved battery life. And um, they also said it's supposedly the most secure operating system they've ever developed but no major de uh, details were announced. Now, in addition to those behind the scenes improvements, we have some new gaming related features. So we have what Microsoft is calling Auto HDR, which was originally introduced with the Xbox Series X. Basically, this will automatically apply HDR effects to your games and even older games like Skyrim. But I think the biggest new feature is actually gonna be direct storage. This is a feature that supposedly will improve communication between your storage device and your graphics card, allowing assets to load quicker without having to pass through the CPU first. So in, in theory, this should seriously improve load times, but um, you know, the downside with this is that it's only gonna be available on Windows 11. They're not making this feature available on Windows 10 devices. They also said that Xbox Game Pass and xCloud will be built into Windows 11. Supported games can also be played seamlessly across devices, and so when a player saves a game on one platform or device, it can be resumed and played on another seamlessly. So those are really all of the new features Microsoft announced at their event on Thursday. Lots of exciting things are coming to Windows. It really makes me want to build a new PC. Maybe I'll have to uh, budget for one to build later this year when it comes out. So with that said, um, Windows 11 is actually coming as a free download for existing Windows users this holiday season and into 2022, although no specific date was announced. Microsoft's probably gonna take their time with this rollout, so that's why they mentioned that it'll roll into 2022. There's probably gonna be a bunch of bugs and some hiccups along the way, so no official release date was, was made. Now I will say lots of really exciting, promising features coming to Windows 11, but uh, there are a couple of cons with this OS that I've found as I'm filming this video. Uh, the first one is that Windows 11 will require slightly higher specifications to run than Windows 10. Basically, you will just need a 64-bit CPU or SOC, four gigabytes of RAM as a minimum, and a minimum of 64 gigabytes of storage. So not too demanding uh, of specs, but still worth noting. The other thing is that Windows 11 Home Edition will require a Microsoft account and an internet connection for the setup process. So this means that people without internet access won't be able to use Windows 11 or will at least have a more difficult time setting it up and installing it. And then just requiring a Microsoft account to set up the operating system just seems a bit restrictive and unnecessary. So hopefully Microsoft will address this and release a Windows 11 Home Edition that doesn't have these requirements. With that said, guys, I'm really curious to hear your thoughts on Windows 11. Let me know what they are in the comment section below. As always, I'm BoHD from Slash.TV. Hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you right back here in the next one. See ya.